So this is lesson 2-4, which is complex numbers and operations. Our essential question is, how can you represent and operate on numbers that are not on the real number line? Okay, so what we need to talk about is, so complex numbers exist because we've been working with parabolas and we've been working with quadratic functions and we've talked about how the solution to the equation of our quadratic equation is where the graph crosses the x-axis. So complex numbers are the answer to what happens when the graph doesn't cross the x-axis. So you can think of, if I sketch a parabola like this, then that parabola is not going to cross the x-axis. So that would have complex solutions, complex roots. Um, so that's where, that is why we have the imaginary numbers why we have complex numbers. So that's what we're talking about in this lesson. So if we're solving an equation that just has an x squared and a number, we can take the square root of both sides. So for part A, if I square root both sides, the left side is x, and what we have to remember is when we take the square root of 16, we actually have two solutions. We have positive four, which is usually the number we think of, but then we also have negative four because we know negative four times negative four is also positive 16. So what we can do is we can write the little plus or minus four. So when we take the square root of 16, remember when we take the square root of any number, remember you have two solutions. Okay, so then for part B, if we take the square root of a negative number. So up until now in math, you've been told you can't take the square root of a negative number. Well, you actually can, because what this is, is this is the square root of 9 times negative 1. So we know the square root of 9 is 3, or negative 3. So we know that this is going to be plus or minus 3. And then what we're left with is this square root of negative 1. Well, the square root of negative 1 is equal to i. So that is our imaginary unit. So the square root of negative 9 would be positive and negative 3i. Okay? So then c I put on here because sometimes we don't have a perfect square. So 9, 16, those were perfect squares. 72 is not. So I wanted to talk about what do we do if it's not a perfect square. So again, we're going to square root both sides. And again, we have that negative underneath the square root sign, which means we're going to have i in our answer. But what I need to do with 72 is I need to factor it so that I can simplify the square root of 72. So 72 is 2 times 36. 36 is 6 times 6. So I'm going to cross these off as I go. Um, 6 is 2 and 3. And 2 and 3. So when we're simplifying square roots, it's a square root, so we need two of the same number in order to pull one out. So I have a pair of twos and I have a pair of threes. So that means that six is going to be on the outside. So I multiply the two times three, one from each group, and then left underneath the square root is what I didn't cross off and what I didn't circle. So that was just a two. And then we have the negative, so we know it's gonna be i. So this would be plus or minus 6 squared to 2i. And if you want more examples of simplifying square roots like that, let me know and I can do them for you. Okay, so example two is how can you add and subtract complex numbers? So we have 4 minus 7i and negative 11 plus 9i, and we're finding the sum, which means we're adding these together. So basically, all we're going to do, and I'll color code this for us, is we're going to combine the real parts, and we're going to combine the imaginary parts. And you're going to make sure you keep the sign with each of those. So if I take 4 plus negative 11, I get negative 7. And if I take negative 7 plus 9, I get 2. The answer to this one would be negative 7 plus 2i. Okay, difference. So difference means we are subtracting. So sum was adding, difference is subtracting. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take the real 
real parts, so 6 minus 2. And then we're going to take the imaginary parts, which is 8 minus negative 5. So you have to be careful with subtraction that you're accounting for the signs that come in front of the numbers. So 6 minus 2 is 4. And then 8 minus negative 5. So that would really be plus. So that would be plus 13 Okay, so adding and subtracting complex numbers is very similar to adding and subtracting polynomials, which you've done before in Algebra 1. So again, you're just combining the, the common parts, so the real parts and the complex parts. Okay, now we're going to multiply. So multiplying is, again, we're going to follow the same rules, but there are some things that we're going to need to know with this. So for part A, if I take negative 2.5i times 8, that's going to give me negative 20i. And then if I take negative 2.5i negative 2.5i times negative 9, that's going to give me positive 22.5i squared. So what I need, this is another part that we need to know. So if I have i, and i is the square root of negative 1, that means i squared would be the square root of negative 1 squared. Well, we know that when we square a square root, those cancel out. So that means that i squared is equal to negative 1. So we can substitute in, instead of the i squared, we can put in a negative 1. So what that's going to do is it's going to turn the 22.5 into a real part, and it's going to be negative. 22.5 minus 20i. Okay, and then the next one we have, it looks like a binomial times a binomial. So we have two complex numbers that we're multiplying together. So we're going to FOIL. So we're going to do first, 3 times 3 is 9. Outer, 3 times 2i is 6i. Inner, negative 2i times 3 is negative 6i. And then negative 2i times 2i would be minus 4i squared. And you'll notice that the 6i and negative 6i are going to cancel each other out. That is because, so our answer to this is actually going to just be a real number. Because these two numbers, 3 minus 2i and 3 plus 2i, are what we call conjugates. They're complex conjugates. So complex conjugates are where you have the opposite sign in the middle with the imaginary part. So 3 minus 2i, 3 plus 2i. Anytime you multiply two conjugates together, you're going to get a real answer out. So here we know that negative or the i squared is negative 1. So that's going to turn this into a positive 4. So we have 9 plus 4, which is 13. So anytime you multiply two complex conjugates together, you're going to get a real answer out. And that's helpful in this next slide when we talk about division. Okay, so how do we divide complex numbers? So this is like, this looks like a typo here. So ignore whatever that is. <laughs> okay, so we have 10 over 2 minus i. And we're going to divide. So whenever you are dividing complex numbers, the process is to multiply by the complex conjugate of the denominator. So we have 2 minus i in the denominator, so we're going to multiply by 2 plus i. And the reason we're doing that is what we just talked about in the previous slide, because we want it to be a real number in the denominator. So we know that whatever, whenever we multiply the denominator by something, we also have to multiply the numerator to keep it equal. So we're going to multiply the top and bottom by 2 plus i. So on the top, we're going to just distribute that 10. So Oops. Let's try to write that better. Okay, 20. <laughs> Having troubles here. Okay, so this is going to be 20 plus... What am I doing? 20 plus 10i, there we go, over, then we are going to FOIL the denominator, 
So we have 4 minus or plus 2i minus 2i and then minus i squared. So again, those middle terms cancel out. So then I'm going to have 20 plus 10i over, so this is going to turn into a negative 1. So it's a negative negative 1, so it would be 4 plus 1, which is 5. And then our last step is we need to break it up into two separate fractions. So this would be 20 over 5 plus 10i over 5. And then you simplify if you can. If you can't simplify, then that would be your answer. But this we can simplify. So we can write this as 4 plus 2i. Okay, so that is complex numbers.